All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab is in the house and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm in the house with a steel flame, Hagakur, here with me for a review and we're gonna analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this little fella right over here. But don't forget to like, to subscribe, to comment, to share your thoughts, to share the post, to share the video. Everything I just said is, is free, so don't worry about that. Just enjoy the videos and we're gonna be happy. I'll be happy, I'll keep cranking these videos out because this is something pretty unique, guys. Uh, you don't see that often. So let's quickly check the size on this little fella. Overall length on this one is gonna be, look at that, like 6.75 inches. Blade length is gonna be like 2.75 for the cutting edge and the handle, we can say, it's like what 4.2 inches so uh not a big knife for example let's quickly check it up against uh, ontario rat number two and ontario rat number one you can see where this guy is standing we are in the ballpark of the ontario rat number two of course but if you check the bag out from benchmade and the mini bag out you're gonna notice that this guy is falling right in between these two offerings from benchmade and if you grab the para three from Spyderco and the Paramilitary 3, you're gonna see that no, this guy is smaller than both and uh, but has more cutting edge than the Para 3. So that it's, uh, that's an interesting thing to check out. Look at that. Chris Reeve knife, small Sebenza 21 and the bigger brother, large Sebenza 21. They're gonna show you where this guy stands and it's right exactly in the same ballpark of the small Sebenza, a little bit less cutting edge, a little bit uh, more weight but still we are in a good uh, company here. Let me show you what, a couple fancy ones. Look at that. Uh, Holt Bladeworks Haptic and Holt Bladeworks Spectre, both prestige. Uh, we are going up in price guys, so we are like not in the same ballpark because this guy is gonna be around uh, 500 uh, US dollar, something in that. Uh, range and here I want to show you just another couple here I've got uh, Shigokov Custom Division F95 NL and Neon NL just to give you an idea of uh, some higher end uh, uh, pairs but here we have Steel Flame Hagakure Wesso Batake designed uh, it's a nice collaboration uh, this is a nice titanium framework made in USA uh, by Steel Flame and they uh, they've been around since I don't know 20 years maybe like a long time doing uh, crazy stuff like really they know their business they know what to do when doing a knife uh, when making a knife and in this case they 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 they, kick, they killed it because this is a very nice one. It's a titanium frame, a full titanium anodized scale with some stone wash, light stone wash finished. Uh, they are not like sla like flat slabs. They there's some contouring going on. There's like a, some three Dness because this is rounded off. Really appreciate that. You get rounded off edges all around not really like chamfered but rounded off for sure like you have an internal chamfering for the scales and uh, it's uh, it's pretty interesting uh, like it, this line is just straight you got like a, a sweeping gently sweeping line here finger groove and pointy uh, heel and um, and the top of the part like around the pivot so you have this pointy uh, parts of course like this this side also uh, follows kind of the edge on the heel and you have an overall compact nice slim nice carryable um, design for this knife so um, you got uh, no internal skeletonization as you can see there's no milling so that's gonna reflect a little bit in the weight we're gonna check it in a second but you have this finger groove and uh, the uh, flipper tab acting also as a finger guard which is pretty fantastic feels absolutely great in the hand you got a simple construction, uh, basically like two screws uh, over here, uh, holding together the handles through the backspacer and just one pivot screw domed. And I believe that's a spinning pivot. Uh, so very simple disassemble uh, for this video. You can also check my video if you want to know how to maintain or if you're just simply curious to see how, how this guy is looking on the inside. Um, and then you got uh, basically no uh, stainless steel lock face insert on this side. You can see there is no over travel um, uh, lock bar stabilizer. So just be careful. I mean, this is not an integral, so you can still bend it back, but just don't, you know, don't over extend the lock bar. 
uh, you got uh, a, um, I, I believe that's a ceramic detent ball, and uh, there's a little bit of a detent ball ramp going on right here on the, I don't know if you can see, you don't have the hard step, you have just a tiny bit because the ramp would, could be a little bit less steep, but still, you got it. Um, and then you have uh, a nice, uh, nicely done uh, pocket clip for the artwork that, that's going on. You see like the dark paws and these like smoky areas. It's classic, uh, uh, still flame style, embellished uh, like to their 100% style. What I'm really not a fan of is just like the, the simplicity. I mean, this is just like a bent uh, slab of titanium and embellished like very well, but it's uh, it's the design that I'm not really f a fan of because the shape, I mean, but it actually works functionally very well because look at the clip uh, ramp uh, for the entrance. It's gonna keep your knife in the pocket and showing like this much. It's tip up carry only. You cannot do tip down, but it's reversible. Look at that. You can do ambidextrous carrying for carry for this one and that's gonna be making uh, um, some people happy. Um, also, you got uh, a very, very cool blade shape. This is the main attraction of the knife. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in this one. So you have like a thumb ramp here with no jimping. It's uh, it's effective actually. You see that this is effective to stop your thumb from going this way. Uh, so I, I really don't feel necessary um, any jimping over here. You got the steel flame. Uh, engraved logo right over there. Very, very cool uh, positioning. So you keep uh, the show side and the lock side sterile looking. Appreciate a hundred percent. And then you got uh, this cut out, which is, uh, you see, it's like creating a nice effect here with the finger groove. I like it. It's not that functional. I mean, you have just to jam your finger like that. And you see, sometimes it doesn't really want to open. Sometimes it's just, uh, yeah, it's not that useful, but like forget about the thumb, uh, thumb flicking. No, it's like, yeah, it's not that uh, easy to do, but it's doable, it's manageable, but it's not for my big fingers, probably it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna stick with the uh, flipper tab, which is jimped, it's nicely chamfered a little bit. So you see, it's good for the light switch and it's gonna be good for the, uh, push button uh, deployment method. So you're going to be pretty much good to go. Um, and uh, beside that, you have, of course, logo here. And then you got the swedge starting from this side. Look at that. And then widening the tip. You see how it tapers onto the side and uh, to leave intact the tip thickness. So this is hard to, to break. You know, you can probably pry. This is like pretty thick at the edge and robust. Absolutely. In fact, the stock thickness is pretty thick. Uh, then from here, you got a belly going on maybe like 30% belly up to this point with a flat grind tip to retain the robustness. And then you got a recurve edge up to the sharpening choil with a hollow grind primary bevel. And you also have three directions for the belt grind lines. Look at that. This is ob oblique, this is vertical, this is horizontal, and the swedge, again, is vertical to create a nice contrast going on in this hand ground blade. Really, really a cool blade. Uh, look at that. I mean, the pretty amazing shape. Uh, sharpening choil, you got some chamfers going on right over here. It's not really like a finger choil, but uh, it's well done for sure. I love that their billboarding is gone. It left, it's just only here. So nice and elegant touch for sure. What I also am a fan of is the sound when you deploy this little guy, it's kyoks. It's like clacks. It's not loud, but beautiful. You're in business. That's like translates into quality. It's music to my ears, really nice clack beautiful. It's sharp. It's resounding, percussive. It's, it's a rich and sweet sound at the same time when you close the knife, almost inaudible. Look at that. Very unobtrusive and discreet. So contrast is part of this knife for the sound department. Let's also check the weight because this is not like a super light knife. There is no internal milling going on. You have full 
titanium slabs, full uh, mm, titanium backspacer, it's gonna weigh it in at 3.92 ounces. For a small knife, it's not that uh, light, but it's, it's good, it feels uh, also good in the hand, nice finger groove and finger guard for the flipper tab. I like this uh, dimple uh, uh, thumb ramp kind of thing to stop and it just feels good like that. It's just gorgeous. If you sink it in like that, yeah, you're gonna have some sharp uh, corner right here, but only as long as you just dig it down, you squeeze strong, you do some hard work, but with a blade this small, probably you won't. So you're gonna be pretty much good to go. Uh, the uh, lock is, uh, it's quite easy to disengage because you have a cut out here. You see some material has been removed. Maybe it's a little bit too flush. You see just like, uh, there's, it's not protruding. Uh, uh, so it's not super easy and there's no jimping. So that's something I would consider maybe. Um, if I were you and uh, you can, yeah, you kind of can do like a choke up, but it's pretty small. You see, there's not much to grip at the end. Uh, but you know, guys, this feels absolutely solid in the hand. There's zero flex. There's no, actually, there is some rattling. Oh, it's just the, the clip. So if I just pinch the clip, yeah, nothing. So it's well put together. It feels solid. There is just this little texture going on over here, but overall, this guy's a little bit on the slippery side, not much grippy texture going on on the surface, but the grip, the shape, yeah, it, it makes it feels like pretty solid in the hand and I don't see any gaps or misalignment. This is very, very nicely done. It's well to get, well put together. Blade is perfectly centered. Uh, there is like zero blade play, no lock rock, no lock stick, even if there's no stainless steel lock face insert, no finger soreness as long as you do a light switch uh, because you can take advantage of the shape of the flipper tab and the jimping right there pretty, pretty good. Um, clip ramp also feels nice in and out of the pocket uh, as a good retention, as a good ramp. Uh, this guy also is running on bearings and the deployment speed reflects that fact. Look at that, this guy whips open like crazy, super smooth opening action. Uh, the closing action, you see, you disengage the lock part, this guy just wants to fall, uh, but you have a strong lock bar tension, so there's no uh, guillotine effect, you have to just uh, uh, give it like just a little wiggle and this is gonna close, so keep that in mind. Also, detent strength, yeah, medium strong uh, detent, that's why this guy wants to whip out like a beast. Fantastic deployment is just wow, really spectacular, really satisfying to whip this guy out. Yeah, you're gonna be happy. So, I mean, overall, this is a pretty, pretty cool knife. Probably a little bit on the heavy side, a little bit of hot spot here. Maybe not too much room to disengage the lock bar. I love this blade shape. This is just really, really badass. I mean, guys, this is pretty cool. If you're a dog lover, if you love dog paws, yeah, that's gonna be for you. And this Japanese uh, American collaboration is just fantastic. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.